Hey there once again YouTube, how you guys doing today? I'm just here to talk about a few things. If you haven't uh, already, please go check out my website. Uh, link is in the description box below right under my email address. I've updated a lot of stuff. Actually, hey, why don't we just go check it out real quick. Mostly I've completely revamped the earthquake statistics page where I show Long Valley, uh, here let me show you, Quake Statistics drop down menu on my website under the more drop down menu. Got Yellowstone, Long Valley, Newberry, Mount Rainier, Cascade Subduction Zone. I just redid all of these, but just for an example, let's go to Long Valley. On the yearly earthquake statistics from 1998 through 2018, two decades worth, I show the coordinate box, seismicity counts for each year for multiple magnitudes, like for example, all earthquakes, Magnitude 1.5 and above, magnitude 2.5 and above, stuff like that. Largest magnitudes per year. Then I show plots, seismic plots of the largest event in the past two decades for each location. I show some GPS deformation charts for recent and past deformation. And then I show some charts showing the progression of seismic activity throughout the years. And then my opinions are at the bottom. So I did a big, big overhaul of the all of these pages because there was some incorrect information. It was kind of outdated, you know. But let's move on. Uh, also, go check out my most recent video. I just updated my GPS video of how to find and access GPS data and even how to make your own GPS plots. So that'll be very interesting for those who want to monitor deformation along with seismic activity. Now you'll notice up here, here we are on is this thing on .org. I only like to use this for quick overview. So we're here, let's go to Norris, YNR. Looks like there's a steamboat eruption. Wait a second, this is YNR, huh? Almost always, guys. I'm, I mean, except for last summer, except for summer 2018. Almost always, steamboat eruptions never show on YNR. They haven't for a long time. Once in a great while they do, though. I did prove that. Three, four eruptions ago, it did barely appear on Norris YNR. But look at this. Look at how big that eruption is. The amplitudes and the lengths of the seismic traces are returning to their early 2018 levels. What does that mean? That means the amplitudes are really increasing. It is lasting much longer. I am unsure if it is putting out more water. So, how to find out. Let's go to Yellowstone. Click Yellowstone, and I believe it has been a week, actually. The 25th, I think Steamboat erupted on the 25th. Click Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Come on, guys. There we go. Okay. So, right down here, yes, April 25th. They have not listed the new one yet. Interesting to note, they usually add the date and the time after I upload it to my website, and I haven't done that yet. Or maybe they just haven't checked the seismic stations. <laughs> but if you look here... Let's go to the water discharge for the Tantalus stream gauge. And we're going to see if it put off more water than last eruption. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're going to have to change something, guys. We're going to have to change this. Days. Seven. Let's do... Let's see. It already has a week, right? I'm going to do nine. So let's do go. I think that will work. Let's see. Will it work? Yes, it will. Oh, yeah, guys. Look at the bottom. Right here is a precipitation increase. You can tell because it's angled. Right here, boom. That's the steamboat eruption on April 25th. Notice it has been about a week. So steamboat could be returning to almost near weekly eruptions, which it kind of broke from that pattern for a little bit. The past few eruptions have been kind of off. But look at this. From where it starts to where it ends, from where it starts to where it ends. I see that's about 5.0 to 7.0, about 2.0 total. From 4.0 to 7.5, I'm going to say. That's crazy. That's 3.5. So that's about, wow, guys. The discharge is about 1.5 times larger than the last eruption. And also, the seismic trace is huge, guys. Well, let's take a look at this in the seismic program swarm, shall we? Here we are in swarm. I already have the data up for YNM. Press OK. Let's go up here. Open file. And let's go all the way to my downloads so we can open YNR as well. Just to prove that Steamboat Geyser did erupt and actually was detected far enough away to be seen on YNR. 
Okay, so first we're gonna turn the spectrogram on and set the maximum frequency to 55. Usually I don't do that, but since Steamboat Geyser eruptions are so large and carry such a high frequency, look at this, guys. All of that is a steamboat eruption. Look at that. Look at the deep, deep red. And notice how it slowly increases. Let's see. That's normal background activity, in my opinion, right there. And then, boom, that's right when it starts. So let's go. Let's zoom all the way out. Sort of see the whole eruption, shall we? All right. Sorry this is taking a little while, guys. Sorry. There we go. Okay, so let's zoom in in the, the main burst. The main burst went up to about, I'm going to say, 65,800 amplitude count, with one spike going probably up to 78,000. That one spike right there. And it started approximately at 820 UTC, which is, I believe, 220 AM Mountain Time on May 3rd, 2019. So that's very interesting, guys. Steamboat Geyser did erupt, and you can see it right here. 820 UTC May 3rd and also which would also be 220 a.m. Mountain Time. So let's go to YNR just real fast. Okay, everything's set. Now, I want to see if we can see it on the station. Now, we pretty much saw that we did. We pretty much saw that we did. Let's see, go down to 820. That's a teleseism. Let's go right here. Uh-oh. What's going on, guys? What's going on? Oh, there it is, right here. Come on, come on. It's to remove some of the background microseisms, I'm just going to do a high-pass filter of 1 hertz. Set the maximum frequency range of the spectrogram to 55. Boom. Yes, we did. Very strong, too. This is actually one of the strongest steamboat eruptions that I have seen appear on YNR, which is much farther away than YNM, since, I'm going to say, maybe July august of last year in 2018 when the eruptions were starting to calm starting to i mean they weren't calming in uh frequency but they were calming in intensity look at that guys it did appear you can see it right here oh yeah look at that very interesting guys so moving on steamboat geyser again did erupt also i do want to say hawaii did see a few earthquakes today Nothing too major. I want to let you guys know I am making a video solely on Hawaii as a warning to those who are living there not to become complacent. Eruptions can begin at any, any time with little to no warning. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it only took about a day or two of increased seismicity. And you're probably wondering why I didn't say increased uplift because increased uplift is already occurring like crazy. And you'll see in that video... It'll probably be, be out in about five days at the max because I'm about to do my monthly volcano update in just a little bit. Notice that there's a magnitude 3.3 at 6.9 kilometers in depth. All the way over here near Fern Acres, somewhat near Langlani Estates, I bet, but it's a little bit too far to the south, southwest to be Langlani Estates. Let's see how many people reported feeling this 3.3. Let's see here. Not seeing, yeah, about 13 people. So it's not too crazy, but still. Any earthquake felt by the people over there, they're probably rolling their eyes like, oh my god, really? Okay, so, not seeing much of a difference right there. Oh, we might have an earthquake coming in. Yep, we got a little buddy right there. Probably maybe 1.8, 2.0, something like that. wonder if a swarm is starting to break out. We'll keep an eye on that, that's for sure. But going back, I do want to let you guys know, let me show you this. So this is one of the tools that I use, the GPS networks map from UNR. Remember, it shows all the GPS stations in the entire world, and you can click on it, and it'll show it. And it's pretty crazy. I love this tool. Uh, you can find a link to it in the description box below, or just go to my most recent video about the GPS deformation and how to find that data yourself. Now, I want you to notice something. Let me go to MMAU which is this one right here. Actually, you know what? Let's go to Joka, which is this one right here. Notice Lingani Estates and the fissures that broke out are right along this area right here. So it's just to the southwest, or the west to southwest. Here's Joka. Now, I want you to notice something. Now, the motion of the plate, NA12 removes the motion of the plate. Usually, it's only for the North American plate, but in respect to Hawaii, it's in respect to the Pacific plate, I believe. So we see right here, Notice, ever since 2008, 
it, we kind of saw a dip in subsidence. Notice that? We did see a little bit of subsidence. Then right around 2014, it started to slowly, 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 slowly rise. But overall, since January 1st, 2017, up with, or excuse me, subsidence was occurring, basically. Then all of a sudden, about a year and a half later, after January 1st, 2017, about a year and a half later, boom, we have the eruptions. Large subsidence for all of the magma to move towards the Lower East Rift Zone near Leilani Estates, right? Well, take a look at this. About 2019, I'm going to say, let's see, 2016, 2018 goes by two. So 2020, so 2019, January 1st, 2019 is right about here, right? Look at the uplift, guys. Look at that uplift right there. And notice right before the eruption, it was not even close to as severe as the uplift is right now. Hawaii Volcano Observatory, let me go back because I just want to show you what they've been saying. Now, there may be some people out there who think that I hate the USGS and I like to bash them a lot. I don't. And there may be some people out there who think that I love the USGS and possibly don't even watch my videos because of it. I don't either. I look at the data with no bias and whatever I see either side is doing that is not correct, I will talk about. So, I, I am not happy about them lowering the alert level. Obviously, there are low levels of seismicity across the volcano. With a few earthquakes, there was actually a 5.3 up near the Hualalai, or I believe that's how you say it. Hualalai? Yeah, the Hualalai volcano up in north, the, the north section of the Big Island of Hawaii, not even close to Kilauea. So they are right that seismicity has been somewhat low, which has me very confused as to why seismicity would be so low with such an increase of uplift at about 30 to 40 millimeters of uplift in the past two to three months. Yeah, yes, that is true. And I will show you proof to that in just a second. Now, of course, 100 millimeters is a meter. Or excuse me, please forgive me, it's a thousand millimeters in one meter. I mean, so, so it's nothing that's going to be like absolutely noticeable to the people there. I mean, 30 to 40 millimeters within a couple months, that's a very interesting increase of uplift just in that short period of time. But we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, just don't be too concerned about it, though. But I do believe eruptions could appear at any time because the uplift is much greater. But let's check this out. Kilauea Volcano is not erupting. Monitoring data over the past eight months have shown relatively low rates of seismicity, deformation, and gas emission at the summit and east rift zone, including the area of the 2018 eruptions. Okay. Low rates of seismicity. Whoops. Low rates of seismicity. Yes, I agree with that. Except for a few large magnitude quakes here and there, and the deep, long period events, uh which carries some more some higher frequencies than normal, than normal DLP events. But still, they're deep long period events nonetheless. Those haven't really appeared for about a week or two. Remember, I've been talking about those a lot in my past videos and even on my website under the seismic events drop down menu in the Hawaii section. But yes, there's low rates of seismicity, but low rates of deformation. No, 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 no. There is not low rates of deformation. Now, I'm no geodist, guys. I'm no professional seismologist either. So seismicity is low, yes, but deformation is not low either. I don't know where they even got that idea. You can obviously see from the data, as you will see in my next video, and as you will see in just a second. And gas emission, yeah, I haven't seen too large of a gas emission, so seismicity and gas emissions are low, somewhat, yes. But deformation's not, guys. 30 to 40 millimeters in the past few months, that's not low. A magnitude 4.2 earthquake occurred at... 326 hours at on April 28th beneath the Kilauea south flank. That was the 4.2 just southwest of Puoo, I believe. Now, this past week saw no significant changes in monitoring data or volcanic activity. Low rates of seismicity were spiked somewhat by a magnitude 4.2 earthquake. Blah, 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 blah. Generating low seismicity otherwise continues. Blah, 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 blah. GPS stations and tilt meters continue to show motions consistent with refilling of the deep east rift zone magma reservoir maybe that's where those deep long period events are coming in huh the magma is coming into the system maybe that's what it means those dlphf events as i like to call them show that the magma is either retreating from the magma reservoir or retreating into the magma reservoir from somewhere from somewhere deep below sulfur dioxide emission rates from the summon pool remain very low that's true so 
they say deformation is somewhat low, right? Well, I really want to contradict that right here. Let's see, let's go to my folder. Let's see, where did I leave it? I left it right here. Okay, there we go. All right. As you can see here, this is GPS data obtained by UNR via the UNAVCO web service. Measurements on the left are in meters. Notice, this is MMAU, which is right between Kilauea and Pu'uo'o, so we should get a good idea of how subsidence and uplift were occurring in this area during, before, during, and after the eruptions. As we see, there was moderate deflation for months and months and months since January 1st, 2017. And then once mid-2018 hit, boom, that is the eruption sequence right here. And look at the inflation at the end. It appears to be inflating at a faster rate than it was deflating prior to the eruption. So we have a good amount of uplift occurring right now, guys. Ever since the eruption calmed in late 2018, you can see the dates right down here. The last data point is April 30th, 2019. That'd be this right here. So we know uplift is occurring actually at a good rate too, guys. And uplift was not occurring prior to the eruptions in 2018. So this goes to show that not all the time uplift means an eruption is coming. I mean, I do believe this uplift will continue until an eruption and I wouldn't be surprised if it was less than a year. But I do have to say, look, again, there was subsidence, there was deflation, and then the eruption happened. Usually we see opposite, don't we? And the eruptions were not just at the Lower East Rift Zone. They were at Kilauea too. In this location too. Even at Pu'uo'o. So for all those out there who think that it's only uplift that, that can happen right before an eruption, that's wrong. Subsidence can be a sign of coming volcanic activity too. Notice this. Remember, all of the magma retreated from Kilauea and Pu'uo'o and went somewhere else and blew up somewhere else far to the east out of nowhere for no reason it just did it like that within like a two days it went traveled miles and miles and miles to the lower east rift zone so it's interesting to see how inflation is occurring at a possibly a faster and greater rate than the substance that was occurring before the eruptions occurred so what does that mean does that mean that eruptions are going to start right away i don't believe so i do not believe so i do believe we probably will get a good warning about maybe maybe a few days maybe even a week at the max but i think it would happen very quickly so anyone who's living in hawaii you guys need to be really safe i really hope you guys stay safe over there because the situation is very precarious and you really 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 need to stay safe and just make sure you're monitoring because if you're living in hawaii and you're not monitoring this stuff you i think you really should because this is what's going on beneath your feet you guys got magma right beneath your feet guys the same cannot be said for me where I live just northeast of Seattle. I mean, if you dig deep down far enough, uh, you, you're going to find magma down there eventually, no matter where you go. But you guys got magma at a very shallow depth, and it is refilling and up with disoccurring again. Yes, it is. I also want to let you guys know that the ETS basically has stopped. That was ongoing here. It was going off and on, off and on for the longest time. Let's go to the past 48 hours. There was a slight burst in ETS down near Portland. And up here near Vancouver Island, right in this area, between Victoria and Vancouver. Notice in the past 48 hours, there's only 14.7 hours of tremor. 11.3, so that's about half right here. Most of it occurred in the past day, but it wasn't too major. So I, do, I have no idea what's going on with this ETS event, guys. It's very, very, very strange. It's acting erratically, because before... What I have seen with ETS events is they start and they go on for maybe a few months or so. Thousands of tremor events, whatever. But they usually don't go off and on like this over and over and over and over. Because we've had some here for about a day or two and then it stops. Some here for a day or two and then it stops. And now we have one down near Portland. And now in the past three hours, it stopped. And then we have some up here and in the past three hours or so, it's basically stopped. So what is going on with the ETS events? They're acting erratically. Very, very, very strange. But we'll continue to keep an eye on this. Go check out my website. Don't forget to do that. Check out my recent videos. Hope you guys are having a great day. And this was just chatting with Ben. <laughs> just kidding. That's not what I'm actually calling this. Or maybe I should. Maybe I should have. Because some of my videos I do script. Some of them I do script. Uh, some of my more important videos. Kind of like my volcano update. I script that one. Those are all scripted. 
<clears throat> but there maybe I should start having one that are just just chat, you know, just grab a cup of coffee, sit down and just chat. Just chat about stuff and not make it too serious. Well, I hope you guys had a great day. I'm off to do stuff. Peace out. See you later. God bless.